by one of the all-time leading sire of sires, A.P. Indy, and out-of-stakes winning daughter of Mountain Cat, Indigo Mountain, a precocious juvenile from a rock-solid family of grade one winning juveniles. Indigo Mountain's female family is loaded with speed, soundness, and graded stakes precociousness. His stakes winning dam is a half-sister to the California juvenile sensation, Siphonic, winner of the Grade 1 Hollywood Futurity and third in the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He makes his move to put a neck in front. Fonz is going to try to go with him. La Bomp de Bay backpedals out of it. Officer is in the clear now. He's got two and a half lengths to make up. And David Flores swings Officer into gear and they come to the final furlong of the Hollywood Futurity. And Siphonic is now running away. Jerry Bailey goes to work on Siphonic and he leads by three. Officer is touching his race, but it might only be second best. Siphonic spurts strong in the Hollywood Futurity. Turning and Siphonic has done it. Siphonic beat a bite three and a half. She is also a half sister to Dam of Larrick, winner of the Grade One Hollywood Starlet at two. Nito is second to last with six to come, and Black Magic Mom is at the back of the pack, past the half mile pole in the 28. Hollywood Starlet and Lara is the leader. It is Lara and Edgar Prado, a two-length lead over Winning Ride, Alpha Kitten, and Dave's Revenge. They all line up in second. It's four lengths to Toro Bonito. Pomona Ball has dropped back. Now seven off the lead. Black Magic Mama just outside of her, and Lara is traveling well. She is a quarter of a mile from the money and leads Winning Ride by two lengths. Alpha Kitten comes under a ride. Not today for Dave's Revenge. Drops back. Toro Bonito at the rail. Lara comes to the final furlong, and she's still there. It is Lara, a two-length lead over Winning Ride in second. Toro Bonito is out, but four behind Lara. Alpha Kitten is fourth, and Lara is clear to the wire. Winning Ride is second. Toro Bonito is third. Lara, Winning Ride, a final surge. Lara, Winning Ride. Lara, yes! He, he was one that just caught everybody's eye when we, when we went through looking the first time. Just knocked us out. Really a good looking horse. And uh, by APND and, and a little different type APND, maybe a little prettier type than he can get sometimes. And so he, he uh, ran the first time at Keeneland. And uh, uh, Brett rode uh, this guy Baird on him. And, and, and you can see, you know, he kind of breaks with him and lays fourth or fifth the whole way. And when they turn for home, he takes him to the outside and the horse starts rolling. Well, he switches hands with his stick and you can see what you can just see the stick fall out of his hand. And he came back and poor guy, he was just devastated. He said, man, it was my fault. I could have won easy and I dropped my stick out there. That was at Keeneland in, in, uh, during the Keeneland meet in October. And then uh, he ran him back in November at Churchill a mile, but it was a, it was a one turn mile. And he broke with him and, and uh, laid second the whole way and then they turned for home and he just literally gallops away from him. I mean, it looks like he's loping and every time he hits the ground, he puts more distance on him. And I think he, the chart gave him six and a quarter, but he just, it was so impressive. And so They're off. Baton Rouge came out quickly for the lead. It's Baton Rouge in front early. Right behind is Flying Warrior away running in second position. And now moving up on the outside, here's Indigo Mountain to show some early speed. And right up there too is Futuristic with Carnival Ride. And now back into fifth is Flying Warrior who's been taken back about three lengths off the lead. Two lengths back to Devil's Apprentice. It's Rawi to the inside. And it's a big gap of eight lengths back to Big Bad Blue. And Sutton Button and completely outrun early here is Get a Rhythm, who's far out of it. The first quarter went in 23 seconds flat up the back stretch. It is Baton Rouge and Sean Bridgemahan in front. Three quarters of a length over Indigo Mountain as they head toward the half mile pole. Two to Futuristic. Flying Warrior fourth along the inside. Devil's Apprentice moves up fifth far outside. Ms. Rawi is down at the rail. And then it's Carnival Ride and a big gap back to the rest. Round the far turn, Battle Rouge in front to a half mile in 46 and one. Battle Rouge a half length in front. Indigo Mountain to the outside second. Futuristic is third. Flying Warrior waiting for running room fourth on the inside. Now Mezrawi comes out to the extreme outside and begins to gain ground. Then comes Carnival Ride. Coming down to the eight pole, it is Indigo Mountain. Now opening up a three length lead. Mezrawi did not go on. Now Futuristic has taken up the chase from second, but far behind Indigo Mountain and Jamie Terrio. They win easily by about six in the end. Well, you know, we went to the cell for Mr. Scarborough, Ken, Clarence, and I, and uh, obviously Mr. Scarborough already, 
you know, winning a Kentucky Derby, that's the kind of horse he was looking for. Uh, those kind of individuals, those kind of pedigrees, the classic type horse. So um, we come across this uh, AP Any Colt that uh, fit all the criteria, obviously, um, uh, with the AP Indy and the classic distance that he's been throwing and producing the history what what he's done. Um, this horse looked like a, a classic kind of horse. And so uh, we were extremely happy uh, when we bought him. Uh, you know, I, I really thought at 600000 that was good value. Um, I, I really did. We were very excited. Uh, I know 600000 is a lot of money, but uh, really thought that was a really good buy at 600000 for that coat. You know, you start reviewing all the things, uh, his, his pedigree, uh, the way he's continued to develop. I mean, he was the total package to be a top three-year-old. Uh, the phone starts ringing off the, the hook, um, and from my understanding, some very substantial offers, uh, kind of funny money kind of offers, and there's probably only a few guys that were able to withstand those kind of offers and not sell, and Mr. Scarborough being one. It was nice to be flattered with the big offers, to maybe think that our judgment of this horse was substantiated by other people's opinions too. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other people that are very high on the horse, too, as us. Uh, so, you know, two starts, two very good races. Uh, it really had us thinking first Saturday in May. Confirmation, speed, precociousness, and a true stallion pedigree, Indigo Mountain may very well be one of the best breeding values in the market today. Just don't expect him to stay there.